Hello Modern Drummer, this is Brandon from Drum Mechanics again. I hope you're all doing well. This month we're going to be looking at pedal placement. How wide your pedals can go, how narrow they can go, how far away they can be, and how close they can be. Please check back to last month's article where we talk about drum throne height, because that drum throne height will be crucial for us to getting accurate information for today. It's important for us to determine where our pedals should be. If we know where our pedals should be, it helps us make sure that we don't put any abnormal forces into our hips and ultimately starts to help our hip flexors, our hip joints, and our back. So this whole thing is about making sure that you're in a neutral and safe position to keep you strong, give you the most performance, and ultimately actually the most balance. Because if we're unable to maintain our balance on our throne, it makes us very hard to perform with our feet. To begin this journey, one of the things that we'll have to consider is the dogma and the sound bites that we've been hearing about for years. Now I'm not saying that they're right or wrong, but it's really common for us to hear things like, you must put your feet flat on the ground and have your shins parallel to the ground and place your pedals there. Some of that may be true, but I'm also saying today that some of that may not be true. Ultimately, we're gonna find through our assessment process today that it completely comes down to you and your individual mechanics. So whatever you've heard and whatever's in your mind so far, let's try to erase those sound bites and think about just a few things. The external variables we'll talk about and the internal variables. The first external device that we need to consider is the pedal, of course. And we have bass drum pedals, hi-hat pedals, and various other pedals. This specific pedal is the Demon Drive Direct Drive pedal. And I have to be honest, I think the bass drum pedal is one of the coolest pieces of the instrument. Um, I'm a big mechanics nerd. And this whole thing is this really cool lever system with opportunities for mechanical advantage and disadvantage so that way we can expose this pedal to the least amount of energy to have this bass drum beater hit a drum to make a sound. It's just super cool. But we need to respect this instrument as well. Although we don't really think about it very often, it does push back into our foot and can cause some issues. The instrument and all the other instruments have some prerequisites. We need to have a specific amount of joint motion available here, and we also need to make sure that it's not pushing us too far back into a joint motion that may actually cause irritation in the bottom part of our foot or the top part of our shin. Let's check out the other external variables. All right, you guys have busted me. We're talking about pedal width, but we have to talk about this external device, the snare drum, and the accompanying floor instruments. Ultimately, these are going to determine where your joints can go. So if you are a taller person or a shorter person, your limbs are going to be different lengths. So you might have to actually work around this drum a little bit differently. So for example, if I set up just at a frame and I've got my legs here, you guys can see that my legs have to work around the snare drum. And if I had a 16 inch snare drum, it would totally change how my legs would go. My legs would be sitting out like so. And if I've got something narrow, but I've got pedals out really wide under my floor toms, my feet are going to be like this. So just remember, this instrument is going to be just as important as where we put our pedals. All right, drummers. So the internal variables we'll be considering today will be the coxofemoral joint or the hip joint. And we're going to look at the ankle, which is the talocrural joint. Now in the article with the foot, I've talked about several bones. The foot and ankle complex is actually relatively complicated. We have 30 bones in the bottom of the foot with 55 separate joint articulations. But the joint that most of us are considering when we're looking at ankle motion with our pedal is the joint called the talocrural joint. Now the subtalar joint and multiple other joints are very much involved, but what we're considered with to make it very simple is the talocrural. So the talocrural is this talus bone, this bone right here that connects into the bottom of the tibia and the fibula. And what this does is it actually creates a very uh, door hinge like joint that allows for pointing motion and lifting motion, which this is called plantar flexion and dorsiflexion, which occurs in the sagittal plane or front to back. The other joint system I described is this hip and femur joint again. Now in the drum throne series we talked about this joint, we talked about the sagittal plane motion, the lifting up and down in the frontal plane. So we're not going to review that today, assuming you watch that series. The motion we're going to look at is what I'll call horizontal abduction and adduction. So what that looks like is from that flexed position of a 90 degree hip, at least in this example, 
Horizontal abduction is the taking away from the body or bringing the leg out to the side. And the horizontal adduction is bringing the leg in. One of the things that we're going to want to watch for is making sure that we don't have an excessive amount of internal or external rotation in this position. There isn't anything necessarily wrong with that structurally. However, when we're doing repetitive joint motions, these excessive rotations start to put a lot of extra strain on some of our hip musculature, which can lead to some irritations or issues. Also, if we lock out the joint in any one extreme direction, when we're doing hi-hat and bass drum stomping motions, it can actually create some abnormal joint motion in the spine. So we want to make sure this is in a comfortable and neutral position. As you guys can probably see, as I bring the bone out like this in this abducted position, if we had two of them, you can kind of start to see how this starts to look just like sitting behind a drum set with having a snare drum in between our legs. Let's move on. Step one in the assessment process is simple. We need to figure out where your throne height should be. Now, the great news about this is we covered this last month, so if you don't know how high you should be sitting, please go back to last month's article series or the video series to figure out where you should be sitting. It is possible that if you don't sit in a position that's comfortable and appropriate for your, your mechanics, that the following information may be redundant. It may not be helpful, it may give you false positive information, it may even increase the likelihood of you getting an injury in your hip joints or your back. Step two is also simple. What I want you to do is once you know where you should be sitting, take a seat on your throne, I want you to kick your shoes off. The rubber on the bottom of your shoe may increase friction, so it actually may increase resistance and give us more false information. Just for now, place your feet on the ground wherever is comfortable. Don't worry about how far your feet are away from you. What we're going to do at this point is I want you to slide your feet all the way out and all the way in, performing abduction and adduction, like we showed earlier in the internal components with the femur. Now, I want you to repeat this three to five times. Uh, there's an internal muscle memory mechanism called post-activation potentiation, which can stimulate your muscles, increasing force production, and very well could increase how far you can go, which means that you might have more motion at the end than you did at the beginning. Also, please try to make sure you keep your knees, relatively speaking, over top of your feet so you don't have too much internal or external rotation at your hips. Otherwise, it could cause some strain at your hip joints and just be unpleasant if we start playing from these extremes of motion too much. We want to try and stay in a relatively neutral and comfortable position for you to reduce forces on your back and your hips. The third part of the assessment is going to be figuring out how far away the pedals are from us. So once you have the width you think feels comfortable for you right now, place the pedals where you think they should be and put your feet down on top of the pedals. I would suggest starting with just your hi-hat and bass drum pedal, and not adding multiple pedals, just so you can kind of get some grounds and some comfort. Once you're there, the most important thing is making sure that when you have a heel down position, you can pull your foot up into dorsiflexion towards your shin. If you can do this, this is great. This means you're working within your active range of motion, within your window of opportunity, and everything is good. If you're sitting too close to the pedal, and you have this kind of angle like so, you will not have the ability to pick your foot off the the pedal, which means that you're going to have a lot of strain at this joint, which can allow irritation of the soft tissue at the front of the leg, strain on the bottom of the foot, and ultimately cause some unpleasant joint problems. So make sure you're staying within your active range of motion. The fourth and final step is the easiest one. Once you've figured out how wide your pedal should be and how far forward or close to you they can be based off of your mechanics, adjust to taste. Again, this entire process that we're going to spell out in this drum set ergonomic series for you is really not to tell you exactly how you should sit, but how you should assess yourself so you can build the drum set around your body. In closing, this series is not for me to tell you exactly how you should sit, but rather how you can assess yourself to figure out where you can sit. This window of opportunity of your joint motion really gives you tons of options. You can sit however you like and set up your drum set however you want, but making sure that you're respecting your body so you don't cause any injury. This is Brandon, your biomechanics and fitness resource for the modern drummer. Please check out my website, check me out on Modern Drummer, and let me know how I can help you guys. Until next month, we'll talk to you soon.